Hi, Joe here over at WillyCottage.com. Okay, so it is episode 16 of Back to Basics and this week is a drum carding again. So I hope you find this video useful and before I go any further, don't forget to hit that like, leave comments below, it helps my channel grow. Um, I have to say that I can't believe it. Only two and a bit months ago, I was celebrating 500 followers on my YouTube channel, subscribers, sorry. Um, I'm literally about eight, seven, eight away from 600 just in a couple of months. So thank you ever so much for all the help and support out there that you all give me. Um, and for this week, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, use YouTube over on my website at www um willycottage.com and it will get you 15% uh, off any of your orders um, UK and overseas special overseas it will help you towards your postage costs as well take advantage of that I will cancel that discount code this Friday coming um, which will be the 6th of October so in capital letters YouTube at checkout in the voucher code section write that in and it should take 15% off your order okay so go and use that take advantage of it i will be doing a sale later on in this month um on items on the website uh, but that'll be the end of that'll be the autumn sale before christmas anyway i was asked if i could talk about ratios um when it comes to blending fibers and stuff like that and i suppose it's down to preference and personal choice but there are reasons behind why you don't want to use x with y or too much of this with that um, when it comes to blending up your fibres and what you want the fibre, your, your art about your yarn, um, what you want to use it for in your project. Do you want to use it for hats and scarves? Um, do you want to use it for socks, which you want more strength in there? Hats and scarves, you want something that's going to have a bit of strength and wear in it, but at the same time, you want it to feel soft against your skin because it's something that's near the naked skin. Or in your hat, you want something that's going to, even though you want wool, you want something that's going to be breathable. So, I've got some notes. So, if I look down, it's because I'm reading my notes because I, I love to do a bit of research and there's lots of information out there on the internet if you go and have a look, just do a, a search yourself for ratios of blended fibres together and you'll find loads of articles out there that are all sort of um, university level, but there is enough to understand. And it's really nice, just have that bit of information in your head and then you can understand why. Okay, so this is a um, just a, a quick abbreviation of an article that I found. Um, wool and yarn properties can be altered through the blending of fibres. We all know that. And according to the requirements of the fibres and the ratio, among different blends, cotton and polyester, um, cotton and wool, wool and acrylic, cotton and nylon, jute and acrylic, and cotton and rayon, etc., all in common practice today. If you look at your labels on your clothes, you'll see that there's a lot of them that are with rayon. Um, or with tencel these days in your fibre in your in your clothing. So go and have a look. Some of them are, are all that one fibre itself. It could be um, tencel, which we all know is a wood pulp. I've got a blouse in my room that's made just from tencel on its own. Um, so it's a, pra um, a common practice. Look at the labels in your clothing. Flax and polyester is a popular blend for excellent properties um, than they are individually alone. So they're quite happily to be mixed together. Um, different properties or ratios of flax or polyester, for example, requires work um, well with low proportions to flax um, as a good balanced fabric. So it's saying really um, you want a lower ratio of polyester to your flax okay um just to give it that more strength and durability most common ratios that are used within the fiber weaving industry um 67 percent to 33 uh, 70 to 30 percent 50 50 45 55 and 52 48 now my thought is you're all wondering right okay joe they're just numbers what am i supposed to do with them right if you buy um, yarns from hand dyers or buy them from the shop or whatever, or if you dye your own um, yarns yourself and you buy it from an undyed um, supplier, look at the ratios. There, that will help you with blending your card, your, your art bats, okay? 
that's information that's how i learned about the ratios and um, from watching what my suppliers do with their fibers and okay and then they explain in a little paragraph underneath what the effect gets from that okay um so i thought for 50 50 and the ratio of 45 to 55 I would do, say something like a, an ultra fine merino, so something that's around about 17 to 11.5 percent, um, sorry, micron count. So you're really, really fine merino. If you did a 50 50 with that with a wool, uh, a normal type of wool, whether it's a higher micron count merino or something like a Corridale or a Rambouillet or a Shetland, or an alpaca, or something like that. It's a little bit heavier. It'll help that fibre to spin, because that fibre, the finer it is with a merino, for special for beginners, it can be really quite hard to work with, okay? But if you blend it together in those ratios, you should have the really lovely fine yarn that's going to give you the most amazing drape, okay? A 70-30, that's generally your... It's, that's the general um, mix that a lot of companies use anyway, especially if you want a wool to nylon blend, which is ideal for your socks. Um, 67.33 is not a ratio that I see being that popular and 52 to 48 is not a ratio that I see that much. Um, wool provides warmth and resiliency, drapeability and absorbency depending on the blend ratios. Uh, the blends of wool and polyester are available in ranges of 65 polyester to 35% wool. And they say that um, that blend of um, 65 to 35 will be a suitable um, fibre to produce a lightweight for all seasons. I just think my body's going to sweat with that amount of polyester. But if you want to go down that route, then you go down that route. That is totally up to you. I suppose it means that you want your, your garment is going to be more washable. Um, as in like in the machine because you've got that amount of man-made fiber in there i couldn't imagine myself wearing that amount of polyester in a piece of clothing um so i will touch on this subject again in a minute um and i've got some ratios of fibers that i have got in my stash and i'll be blending them up anyway um i will be doing a couple of blend sets that will go along with this video and they will be available on the website um later on today or tomorrow Sunday we're on now if you're watching this <laughs> okay uh, Sunday the 1st of October so lucky white rabbit to you I would do pinch punch first day of the month but you're not here for me to abuse you right so I have weighed out my fibers and I'm doing a th it's roughly 25 to 30 percent ratio of kid mohair to wool blend okay so I have that hand dyed it's fall kid mohair locks that have got so i have to sit and tease them apart as i'm blending okay i do have a bit of merino that has got some tuss of silk in there but probably you're lucky if it's even one percent of um just silk with the amount of wool that i've got here to go in with this then i've got um some shetland just to bring the ratio down a little bit and that's probably equivalent of about five ten percent not a lot there, definitely not a lot there. And then I have got this Merino and Tensile blend, um, which is a 30-70% ratio on here. So if we look at the grand scheme of things, we're probably looking at a it's 150 grams here. So there's probably the equivalent of 50 grams of fibre, like mixed fibres, silk and mohair and Tensile to my wool. So that you're looking at roughly about a 35% um, ratio, roughly round about that. Not going into maths, it's Sunday morning, it's far too early for this information, but I'm trying my best. So I'm going to blend these up. So I've got this, I was doing this on a demo yesterday, and this is the wheels I was putting apart for doing fractal spin to show people how to prepare your ovens. So that's what I'm going to use today. So um, I've got a blend set, the exact same as this one. Um, over here, hold on a second, where am I putting it? So there's the blend set. It's roughly about 110 grams of fibre in that, and that's the same ratio as what I've got here. So roughly about a 30% ratio to 70% in will. Okay, so we'll stick that to one side, and I'll get on with this. I'm not going to bother talking through... Um, the actual drum carding of it, I'll film it and 
do a little bit of music over this um, because a lot of information going in there but you can still see what i'm doing and how i put it together because we put it together it doesn't make any difference with the ratio at all um and i've got little bits of grass in here that i need to pluck out as i'm coming along so bear with me and um i'll catch you on the other side of blending this bat
there we go so these um the kidmore hair i've used in this is locks from a farm that i sourced down in, um, in wales now you can buy um kidmore hair as a comb top um, from some of your suppliers um, undyed you can dye it yourself not a problem it dyes really really well okay um without any issue just treat it like you would do wool and dye it with um, your milled dyes pigments and citric acid that's it nothing to it you just want to wash it all first if you're getting it as a raw um raw fleece like a, a raw coat like i do um but yeah so it dyes it really well this one does have little clumps of a dried grass in there it will flick out i've got most of it out it's really quite hard but in the blend bag i have added in an extra 10 grams of the kid mohair locks in case there's any bits that have missed out and you've had to pull them out and you lose out some of your weight so i have added that but not to the price of that um so you should end up with 129 grams instead of being charged for 109 or 110 thereabouts so anyway so that is one bat ready and that is a blend ratio of approximately 70 to 30 70 to 35 grams of kidmo hair and uh, tensil with um, a dash of tussa silk in that blend and that that would give you a nice little halo type yarn as well and it gives you that luxurious lustre shine to it you can see in there it has got a lovely shine on that fiber okay so next ratio just a little quick section added to this so um if you want to blend fibers yourself at home i generally try and stick to no more than a 65 45 ratio when it comes to me adding in the wool fibers if you wanted to add more silk into that when you get it at home then that that's up to you you can re-blend it and add in some extra silk and if you wanted to have that really luxurious um drape to that fiber when you're spinning it up um i stick with those ratios because i have to take in mind that i've got felters that buy my bats and that i have beginners using my bats and if i had too much silk now um have i got any iona you need to move love iona move move do apologize she insists on lying right next to my feet when i'm doing stuff uh, i'm just looking to see right no i haven't got any i haven't got any in. i have i thought i had some mulberry silk left mulberry silk is a really slick shiny slippery silk um i do use it in my blends but if i was doing a ratio with that i would only ever add 15 percent of that into my fiber if i'm going to use a silk that i want a larger ratio to i generally use tosser silk tosser silk is it in its natural form on dyed is a lovely it has got a slightly rougher feeling to it in comparison to mulberry silk it's still silky it's still smooth it's still really lovely and luxurious but it does have um a little bit more it's got a touch sticking slightly crimpy in there in that fiber whereas a mulberry silk which i can't find anywhere has got a really slick feel to it almost like if you've ever touched bamboo fiber before it's got that shiny it can't grip onto anything that's the sort of thing so i generally tend to use a lesser ratio with that mulberry silk than i do with the tussa silk the tussa silk are quite happily adding quite a lot because i find that as a beginner spinner you're quite you're not going to have an issue with this once it's blended in your fibers you're not going to find no slippy bits when you're spinning sometimes with those slippy pieces you find that you're spinning just that and there's no wool attached to it um so yeah that's my reason is behind it uh, merino and stellina um, or trilobal if you've got that at home uh, it's a nylon based fiber man-made um, but usually really sparkly and you can do a 70 to 30 percent ratio on that um, there's another one that i have actually got here this one is stunning you can spin this look how shiny that is but this is a 40 percent folklore merino with 20 percent baby camel 20% eerie silk which is another slippy type fiber but it's more it's a cross between a mulberry and a tussa silk when it comes to its consistency um so i'll read that again 40% uh, falkland merino wool 20% baby camel 20% eerie silk and then 20% uk llama 
is in this fiber and it's absolutely luxurious now i generally use this as a add-in to my fibers um i would probably do a 30 percent of this to a lovely merino or a rambouillet or something like that because it's so glossy you can spin it and you'll end up with a lace weight yarn if you spin this because the fibers are so fine in it so I think I, I like to bulk it out a little bit. I'll put sometimes if I've got quite a bit of this, I will add in or if I'll add in some extra llama from from itself, like llama top. Um, eerie silk. There's different colours of eerie silk that you can buy. And I do have it around here somewhere. Um, get red, but it's more of a golden red sort of colour. You could add in um, sari silk noil into this as well um, and, and make it into something else. But it, what it does, this blend itself, the 40-20-20-20 mix. So in other words, a 60 rate, 60% mixed fibre ratio to 40% wool is generally what you're looking at, okay? And it'll give it a luxury soft yarn with a silky smooth touch. If you wanted to add in a little bit extra more wool into that, happy days really at the end of the day um next one is where have i got i might have put it on the other pick there we go there's another one that i've got let me just bear with me a second while i just try and find it um is it in here it wasn't here this one this one is another one and this shows what type of fibers you will get when you mix things up this is 40 percent alpaca okay with 30 percent blue face leicester wool okay and 30 percent polworth is in that and it feels different in comparison to this this feels more bulky because of the amount of wool that's in there so you're looking at technically 60 percent wool to 40 percent um alpaca blend in this and the same with this you've got a 40 percent wool ratio to 60 percent luxury fibers in this one and there's not much of a sheen in this because of the blue face leicester is quite a dusky looking color but this one's got the shine in it because it's got the eerie silk in there and the camel in as well so this is going to make you more of a bulky yarn which is probably going to be perfect for winter clothing this one's going to make you if even if you want to blend it up it's going to make you a very lightweight drapey looking garment okay so the less wool ratio to the mixed fibers that you've got is going to enhance the type of drape or the wear that you're going to get from an item, whether it's a luxury item that you might want to make an evening shawl or a, a Blano jacket out of it for evening garments, um, then have at it. Uh, what else have we got? We've got 70% merino and 30% silk slubs, and it's perfect for spinning up Tweedy style yarns. So, I mean, this is merino burrs and these are really great these because of the size of them they will stick in your wool quite happily and i'm going to do a blend in a minute using these you can use um wool naps uh this sort of thing now these are deceiving you only need about five percent per hundred grams of these okay twenty percent of one of these is massive amount and you would not use them all in your art but they would just overtake it um and think of the mess because <laughs> i call them popping candy but if you blend them in your fibers really well and make sure that in between all the layers when you're blending on for an art bat make sure they're not on the top of your last layer you want to do them on your um in between layers and it means that when you're spinning it it'll help catch on to those where the fibers will trap them into place which will make it easier for spinning and working with later on you will lose some definitely but they're nice to mess around with i tend to go if i want a tweedy yarn if i want it for um if you was to make an aaron style jumper or something like a cable knit i would use the thicker blurs these ones and i do have a couple of sets in different colors in this fiber at home and all it is is the the bits at mill ends from processing the merino and it is merino it's 100 percent merino so i will do a blend with this in a minute um so the blend that i've just done now the 70 percent 
merino to a 30% kid mole hair blend. Um, so I've got 70 wool to 30% kid mole hair. That's going to give me a really easy handled yarn with a soft lustre um, and a slight halo because I've used the locks. If, as I say, if you got the, ro the top, the combed version of the kid mole hair from your supplier, then you probably won't get as much of a halo, but I'm using cut lock, so it's a little bit different. Um, and it's not been mill processed. I've washed them myself at home and washed them as they've come to me. I've not chopped them up or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's it. If you've got any questions, put them down below, but I will be getting into more details about different types of ratios and the reasons why next year. Okay. So I'm just gonna have a sip of my coffee and I'm sort out the wills that I'm gonna do next and it will probably be something along these lines for ratios and I'll catch you in a sec. Okay, so the next bat that I'm blending that comes with a blend set, okay, is this one. Now, the roving that's with this is a hand-dyed roving. Hand-dyed roving um, and it is a 70% blend of merino with flax and silk in there okay and what i want to do is bring up the ratio of the silk um in this blend mix and in the art bag that i'm about to blend up um, and bring it up so it's more of a 70 30 ratio okay so this was weighed out roughly about 47 grams inside the pack so i've added in some complementary merinos dashes of them to bring it up to 70 and with that have got that llama um llama oh, i don't know it wasn't it was some my notes some my notes some my notes uh 40 percent of falcon merino 20 percent of baby camel 20 percent of eerie silk and 20 percent of llama so that's what's in that blend and i wanted to bring that up and enhance the silk content um so that you get more of a, a gorgeous lush to dra um, drape so I've got natural, hold on a minute, that's a merino tussa silk blend, some natural tussa silk, some dyed tussa silk and some hand dyed tussa silk and the merino burbs. So this is going to be um, a tweedy, silky sort of blend. Um, the burbs are only rough about five, five grams worth, so they're not very much, but I've brought the ratio up. So you're probably looking at a 28 gram, uh, a 28 percentage of silks in there with two percent of burbs and the rest is all of wool so that is your ratio pack for blending a 70 30 so i'm going to get on with this like i did last time and in this i'm using hand dyed merino um, silk flax blend um, merino dyed merino burbs Llama, Baby Camel, Falkland Merino, Eerie Silk Blend with hand dyed tussa silk and natural silks. So let's see how this goes out. I'll catch you in a bit on the other side.
Okay, so there you go. You've ended up with a very luxurious blend in this with the amount of silks that I've added into it. So um, it means that the price is a little bit more expensive than if I just use a um, 15% ratio of silk to, uh, to a wool blend. Um, you're looking generally market price of um, just a silk at the moment, I think is £4.50, not £5.50 or six quid. I'll have to double check um, per 100 grams um, it does it, it goes a long way to be fair but the ratio when you're pricing up things it, it sort of brings up the price when you're blending stuff but there you go that is a 70 30 ratio wool to silk blend with some really soft willy neps that will spin up really really nicely um, you won't lose them They've been carded in throughout the layers and you will end up with a tweedy effect wool to silk yarn. So there we go. So I've got one, I might demonstrate one more and I think I will do a nylon blend with some sparkle in there. Okay, so I'll catch you in a minute. Right, next one up is a 70-30 ratio of a biodegradable nylon um, with merino and two different colours of Angelina. Okay, so we've got this gorgeous, rich gold biodegradable nylon, um, works just as well as any other normal type of nylon, but this one will break down um, quicker than the standard, okay? And it goes through a, a different type of chemical process. Then I've got this vivid coral or salmon coloured merino, lipstick pink, lipstick red this dash of mixed blended it's got a dash of tussa silk in there as well and a bit of stellina and then this eggshell colored merino so that's what i'm going to be blending with next and i'm using a fuchsia pink angelina now there's no point putting weight ratios on these because even a gram you'll be looking there'll be loads loads of it um, usually when you buy this stuff it's only in 10 gram packs and they're proper filled to the brim and um, see if I can find one that's not been used yet uh, there one I've barely opened up and there's loads of it for 10 grams so as little or as much as you want blink wise is up to you um, I always think less is more 
everyone's different so this blend set is going to be available with this bat today on the website so this is a nylon base one and this is a really good one if you want to use it for knitting socks spinning it up um, knitting your socks up um, hats gloves that sort of thing really uh, if you find that the 30 70 ratio is, is just too much nylon for you it spins up really really nice to be fair I've spun it on its own this bi um, biodegradable nylon and it spins up really really lovely a really unusual fiber to spin believe him believe me um, but because it has like this dry feeling on your fingers uh, because obviously it's not a wool fiber so it doesn't have that natural feel about it, it is a man-made fiber but give it a go if you've got any um, if you haven't and you want order the bat from this um, and you want to try um, try out the nylon on its, its own to see what it's like to spin and you buy this bat blend let me know and I'll stick a bulk a, a bit in your 30 grams or something like that. that's all you need for testing and I'll throw that in with your with this order because um, I've got loads of it I have got loads of it and all in this goldy color as well so I'm going to get on with this next bit and I'll catch you in a minute.
There we go. So that is a 70-30 ratio of a, um, a biodegradable nylon mixed with wool. The tiniest little hint of um, just a silk and rami in there and not even 0.5% of Angelina in grams, uh, not point five grams of Angelina in there in two different shades. So that one will be on the website with the blend set and my brain while I'm blending, this is what happens. <laughs> I thought, why don't I do you a blend showing you how to lift up a fiber that's coarse um, and soften it down so that you can actually use it. Cause some fibers, though they look lovely, when you actually get them, they're probably about 32 to 34 micron count, which can feel soft to some people and doesn't bother them. But bringing down, uh, bringing down the harshness or the coarseness of the fibre by blending it with a different fibre to help soften it out and, and make it a bit more lofty, sometimes a really good way of doing things. So if you just bear with me, I will go and hunt out the stuff that's in my head and I will um, sort that out for you now. Okay, so the fibre I actually found is a... Welsh Mountain, okay. So a Welsh Mountain is a really good hard wearing wool and it's brilliant more for outer garments like heavy jumpers when you're out and about as long as you've got a shirt underneath. Now, there is an issue with um, Welsh Mountain and coarser wools is the guard hairs, okay. So this is the pack that I've made up with this breed and it's got a um, hand dyed merino in there, multicolored merino, it's got a dash of tissue silk, it's got dyed merinos in there and a bamboo coloured blend mix in that pack and those are the exact same fibres that I'm going to use in this now so I'm just going to weigh it out and I'm just going to show you what I mean now can you see let me see if I find a good bit there are here we go that the when you're dyeing um, a coarse wool that has guard hairs in the guard hairs generally don't die can you see that they end up still holding on to their their white colour um, and they will stand out like barbs on the on the fiber very very crimpy very coarse and will jag out now that's not to say that you can't use it these fibers will pop out as you're spinning away unfortunately when they go when this wool goes to the mills they are unable in the process to take the guard hairs out of this wool um, if you wanted to if you had a farmer nearby you that had this breed um, I don't think even they could cut the, the fleece in such a way you wouldn't get the guard hairs. You do generally have to pick them out, but they will sit in your knee when you're spinning and come out. And they will create a type of halo effect on your wool. It's nice to try it, spinning up a coarse wool, but I find this type of coarse wool, I like to blend it up with um, a softer micron count that will not make the guard hairs so obvious when I'm spinning it and it'll help bring up the micron count on or bring down the micron count to a point. I mean, it, it's never going to stop being coarse, but if you mix it up with a merino, it definitely brings that coarseness down a level. OK, so I've got this one It's hand dyed in this purple violet colour. So I've got 54 grams of that in there, which is not a lot. So I've got now these merinos, dark purple. There's another piece of it. I'll leave this one to the side just in case I've got enough of what I'm using. Two shades of purple. And then I've got this hand dyed merino. Let me just get that out of there. And I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna split this any further, not already is. I'll probably just blend it straight in there. Oh no, I've, I've already done it. Joe, what are you talking about? You've already divided it up. So just blend this up here. So you're looking at that coarseness of fibre, that coarse wool is going to end up being a 30% ratio to 70% merino, which I think is a nice consistency. Then I've got this mixed coloured bamboo. And I've got this multicoloured merino. And I've got this little dash of um, to silk. So there we go. 163 grams so we'll see how far i can get with this um well actually if you're looking at that then you're thinking i had 50 just just over 50 grams of the um welsh mountain sheep the coarse fiber and now i've got 163 grams altogether with the bamboo and the tussa silk so if you want to break it down to ratios you're probably looking at 25 percent 
Welsh Mountain and then maybe looking at a 10-15% ratio of bamboo and tussy silk in there and the rest of it will be merino wool. So it should bring up the loftiness and the um, a bit more softer handling in that ratio okay so give it have a go yourself at home um, just order yourself 100 grams from your supplier of a coarse wool and see what you can do with it to bring up that softness okay bring up a grade really is what i'm talking about so i'm going to go and blend this now and these four bats and the four blend sets so it'll be eight items going on the website um, take advantage of them as I said earlier on, there is a discount code and I will let you know what it is again at the end and it will pop up on the screen as well. So I'll catch you in a bit. Okay, so there you go. So you've got a 25 percentage of um, Welsh Mountain coarse wool in here. I can feel the difference in the weight of it. It, feel, it has a heavy feel to it, a heavy, yeah, heaviness to it. Um, the merino doesn't feel half as soft as what it would normally do. Still soft, but maybe it's because I know what fibres are in there. But it still has a nice, it has a nice softness to it. The Welsh Mountain was completely not only blended in there in between those fibres 
uh, between the merino layers and the dash of bamboo and then the dash of um, just a silk not a lot but enough just to give it a different effect and that's definitely going to be a workable yarn to use and just keep in mind that when you're using um, coarse fibers a lot of the uh, coarse wools a lot of them do have guard hairs in there especially when you're looking at the higher ranges on the micron count round about anywhere from say 33 up to 40 um, but they will pop out it is workable wool make them into blankets use them for things that are going to be hard wearing but you put blankets over the top of your duvets over your bed sheets so it doesn't matter if it's coarse on that front it's a good wool for weaving with as well um the coarser fibers of wools uh, so yeah and take that into consideration as well if you're a hand spinner who spins um with your own um weaves with your own hand spun wool then the different types of fibers creates different effects when it comes to your warp and weft as well but that's something that becomes a learned skill um, you can read bits and pieces online for a bit more information a bit more in depth detail but as a general rule a nice coarse fiber is a good one if you want to weave heavy duty blankets for the back of your sofas over the top of your leg when you start watching tv that traditional heavy wool blanket is ideal with those sort of five um, wool breeds um dorset um trying to think of another one um border Leicester maybe more maybe um trying to think what else chevy it's not the softest wheel so i mean that's probably one texel's another one um it's water balls um uh, black nose uh black nose valets those are coarser wheels so those are things that you could sort of calm down with some softer wheels like blue face lester rambelay um shetland if you wanted to um I'm trying to think of any other fibers that you, off the top of my head there's never anything when it's off the top of your head is there um yeah it's not coming but you know where i'm at wednesdale's another one as well um so you can bring up the softness on them but those fibers are absolutely perfect for weaving throws for your sofa and for your bed so anyway that's me completely done oh over and done with so remember use the code in capital letters youtube um valid from the 1st of october which is today until this friday the 6th of october um and that'll take 15 percent off your order it'll be the lowest um will it be yeah it will be the lowest priced item in your car that it'll take the 15 percent off more than likely um i think that's it so yeah take care of yourselves i will be around for next saturday for live chat i'm on my own next week Phil's going south with his elderly parents, going to see his daughter, son-in-law and grandbaby. It's not grandbaby, she's three. Um, tot, nuisance, menace, child of Beelzebub. That's what children are to us. You know what it's like when you're growing up and so you've had your own kids. It's like, oh my God, where's that screaming coming from? Um, yeah, so that's me. So I'll catch you next time if you want to come and keep me company because little old Joe's on her own. Um, and I will catch you for a live chat, a fortnight... Um, oh, a week Wednesday so not this week next week and I'll be doing a spinning demo because if you go over to my YouTube channel uh, my, sorry my Instagram account you'll catch my live chat from yesterday where I showed how to do um, split a roving and a bat for making fractal spinning after the conversation we had on live chat about barber pole um, so I did a demo yesterday and I have got the bat kept to one side and I will spin that up um, some of it up over the week and the rest of it i will do on the live chat a week on wednesday so that's me definitely off my dogs are getting the fidgets and they're driving me potty and i've got to go and list these on the website so take care of yourselves be good if you can't be good mom's the word